Welcome back to Houdini Isn't Scary, part four, lights, camera, icing. Now in this part, we're beginning to go over rendering. Rendering is the process of taking what's in our scene and outputting something. And what we would output usually is an image or a video. So before we actually render, we need to set up a couple of things. We need to set up lights, we need to set up a camera, and we need to add materials to our donut, our icing, and our sprinkles. And my apologies for the audio in this one. There are some audio dips. We're trying something new with the audio, We're trying to get it cleaner. I hope it's not too distracting, but let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight into it. Back in Houdini, we have our three objects that we have created. And if you don't have this file, feel free to download it in the description below. There will be a link and you can just continue from there. Now, here's the thing. We have our donut, our icing and our sprinkles. And you're thinking, wow, this is so cool. I just want to show Instagram a video of this, right? Or an image. Now, how do you do that? All right, because currently these are just objects and you want to post a picture. Much like in real life, we need to take a picture of the objects that we have or we need to record a video of them. And so that requires a few things. We have our objects, but we also need, well, a camera. And as any seasoned Instagram veteran knows, a good light source. And then we can go ahead and create an image. So Houdini is no different. It also needs a camera and a light. So we can begin by adding a camera. Let's just find an angle that we like. I like something like this. Right? I think that looks pretty decent, sort of three quarter. Now, you go up to our shelf tools and you'll notice that on the right half of your shelf tools, there are these lights and camera tools. Now, we can go over to camera and holding control, click on camera. A few things will have changed that you'll notice. Firstly, a camera in your object network. The other thing, you'll notice that there's this highlighted area, which is surrounded by this thin red border. And that's just the frame of your camera. Much like in real life, if you take a picture of something, you don't take a picture of everything. You only take a picture of what's in the frame. You know, other things get cut off. So this is how you frame things in Houdini. You'll also notice in the top right of your viewport, you now have this little cam one. And that means that your current view is the view of camera one. So if we go into view mode by either holding space or clicking on view and moving away, you'll notice it switches to no cam. Now we can just very easily go back to camera one by clicking on no cam and then finding cam one over here, right? So we're back here. What happens if we would like to change the position of this camera now that it's placed? Well, there's a really nice way to do it. You can activate this lock on the right hand side and that's the lock camera or light to view. And then you can move around and instead of removing you from cam one and taking you to no cam, instead it adjusts the position of cam one so you can find a better angle. And then once you're done with that, don't forget to uncheck this so that you can move freely again without affecting your camera. And we can see our camera over there. Great. So we've got a camera, but now what do we need? Well, a light would be good. So let's go ahead and create a light. Let's just create a light behind our donut, maybe over here, and we'll make that an area light. So holding control, click on area light, and you'll notice it does something very similar to the camera. It gives you this highlighted area, it grays out the sides, and it also makes an area light over here. Additionally, it also gives you this area light at the top right in your viewport, and you can switch between camera one, and if you wanna go back to your light, you could say look through light, area light one. Pretty cool. Alternatively, left click to go to camera or right click to see lights. So now we have our camera and we have our light. We have all of the criteria that we needed to render, right? We have objects, we have a camera, we have light. So let's go render it. If you go up to the top of your viewport, you have scene view, animation editor, and render view. We'll go over to render view. And in here, we're going to change from ROP camera to object one, camera one. That's our camera that we created. And as you can see over there, it says auto create ROP. We don't have to worry about ROPs for now, but we will see it in the next tutorial. So don't stress about that too much. Then we can click on render. When you click on render, you'll notice these blocks start to show up and it starts to render. It also says over there, rendering and a percentage. Now, this looks like a very scary donut, but it's okay because we haven't exactly sorted out our lights yet. At the moment, we have just one light. So think of it as a dark room and you have just one light shining from 
behind our donut, right? It's going to give it that silhouette kind of creepy look. We can just cancel this render by clicking on stop render. And then we can go to our scene view and let's add some more light. So the light that I want to add is what's known as an environment light. And adding an environment light makes all the difference to a render because think about it in real life, right? It's a good way to always think of these things in terms of real life. In real life, if you place your donut in a dark room with one light, it's not going to make for a great picture. But if you put your donut, say, in a kitchen and the light from the kitchen illuminates the donut, it's going to look a lot better. And it'll look very different if you take that donut and put it into a forest. You know, I don't know why it's in a forest, but it'll look different in a forest. So what we can do is we can also make an environment. So go up to the top in your shelf tools, hold control and click on environment light. It'll add this ENV light over here into your object network. And this light is a bit different to our area light. What this light takes is an environment map, also known as an HDR or an HDRI. Now, an HDRI is a special type of image. It's basically a sphere that has an image mapped to it, and then it emits light based on that sphere. So where do we get such an image? Well, fortunately for us, there's a really great website called HDRI Haven. So if we just type HDRI Haven, Dot com, we have this. And this guy is great. If you haven't checked out his things, please go check it out and support him if you can. All of this is for free. So we can just go over to HDRIs at the top and there's a whole bunch of HDRIs. And if you want to download one, you just click on it and then you can scroll down and you'll see there's different resolutions. So 8K is usually fine, even 4K is fine. We'll do 8K, you just click on that and download, right? And it'll start your download, no problem. Now, back in Houdini, I already have an environment map. So I'm going to go over to environment map on our environment light option, go to the open floating file chooser, go ahead and find my HDRIs file. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use Euler Room. Now, you'll notice that the background of your scene changes. And this is the boiler room that I've brought in. As you can see, it's its own environment. So we can go over to render now, Click on render again, and things will look completely different. Not so spooky anymore. We have a donut and it's in our scene and we're now creating an image. So that's all well and good, but how do we control how our donut actually looks? And this is something that we haven't really touched on at all. And it's something that's very important. When rendering, Houdini doesn't exactly know how to render this. It renders it in a very basic way. What we can do is we can apply a material to each of our objects. And once again, much like in real life, different things have different materials. For example, your desk might be a wooden desk, but someone else that's watching might have a glass desk. And you know, it might be the same shape, it might be the exact same desk, except one's made of glass, one's made of wood. Now, the way that light interacts with those two is completely different. One would be you know, brown and it would be rough while the glass would be reflective and let light through and it would refract, right? All these things. And so those are all things that get handled by materials. So let's just neaten this up firstly. We can just rename a couple of things. Camera, area light, environment light. And we can also just cancel this render. Now, our three objects need three different materials. So how do we create materials? You might think to go to the material network, right? So you click on OBJ and then material network. And here you are, it says, press tab to add Vex Boulder, blah, blah, blah. But there's a much easier way that Houdini gives. So we can go back to our object level. On your object network panel, you'll see that we have this material palette. Go over to that. Now in this panel, you'll notice that it's split into two. We have these things on the left and this area on the right. These things on the left are a bunch of pre-configured materials. And now most of them are configured from something known as a principled shader. A principled shader in Houdini is the basic way that you'll give things materials. It has all of the parameters that you may need. So it controls color, roughness, metallics. It controls things like transmission. So you can make ice and transparency. All of those things are controlled by a principled shader. And most of these are just preset versions of that principal shader up here. You can see over here, it says principal shader. So like, so like glass would just be 
the principal shader adjusted so that it looks like glass, right? So now let's create a principal shader. So we click on it and we drag it over, right? Once it's placed in here, you might notice something. It says material, right? It says forward slash mat. And if we double click on this principal shader, it takes us to our material network. So what this material palette has done is it's given us access to a bunch of shaders and we can just drag it in here and it puts it into our material network, right? That might seem a bit convoluted, but basically here we have our objects, here we have our materials in our material palette, we just have a nice way of controlling them. So double click on the principal shader. You can double click over here to rename it. We'll rename this one to icing shader. So now we have a principal shader for our icing. If we go back to our material palette, we can see what the shader looks like. So we can grab the shader, so click on it and drag it over to your icing over here. Now you can drag it over onto your icing in the render view or into the icing in your object network. So you could also very easily just grab this icing shader and drag it on. You see it highlights what you want to put it onto. So we put it onto our icing. And then if we go to our object level and click on icing and go over to render, you'll see that there is now a reference to it. It says material matte icing shader. So clearly there is now a link, right? And that's great. What this has done is it's given our icing a material. So now we can go over to our render view. And if we click render again, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by what you see. Look at that, we have this shiny icing on top of our donut. So if we go back to our material palette, if we click on our icing shader and go over to surface, we have all of the settings that we could possibly need for making this look like whatever we want it to look like. For example, if you want this to be even shinier, you can drop the roughness. Right, so it's a super glossy donut now, and I actually think that looks a bit better. So we'll do a roughness of, you know, 0.13. Cool, so I like the way that looks. Now that we have one for our icing, why not make some for our sprinkles? So let's click and drag a principal shader over, double click on it, rename it in here. We'll rename this one to sprinkles shader. Go back to our material palette, click and drag on this drag it onto just any one of the sprinkles, it'll apply it to all of them. Now you may notice something about these sprinkles. When we added that shader, it got dull. And that's because if we go over to our surface options with our sprinkle selected, you'll see it says base color and it's not white, it's gray. Now what Houdini does is it takes the color attribute that we have, you know, CD, and multiplies it by our base color. So what it's currently doing is it's tinting it with a gray. That's why these don't look as vibrant as they used to. And we can very easily just click on that color and push it up to white. And all of a sudden, these are brightly colored. So what happens if we'd like to say, change the color of our icing? We have the option of either going to our object network, into our icing and changing its color over here, right? We can change it from brown to whatever color we want, or we could change the color on our icing shader. I'm actually going to set our icing's base color the CD attribute to plain white. Now, if we go to our material palette onto our icing shader, we can directly control the color from here. So let's make a nice pink donut. And sometimes when you're clicking and dragging and that your renderer will freeze up. So just stop it and render again. Now we still don't have a shader for the actual donut. So we can drag another one of these principal shaders over and rename it to donut shader. Back in your material palette, click and drag your donut shader onto your donut. And that looks too shiny. Go over to surface, increase the roughness. And instead of tinting this gray, we want it to have its original color because that color looks really nice. If we go back to our object level, we now have this great looking donut. And we can still make all the changes that we had before. Say we want to swap in our tubes instead of having these spheres. Everything still works the way that it used to. As you can see, we now also have these materials. If we go over to the render tab on each of our objects, 
Sprinkle shader, icing shader, donut shader, right? Pretty basic. We have the shaders, they're linked to the materials in our material network, and our material palette just gives us a really nice interface to work with them from. So back on our object level, let's play around with this a bit, you know, maybe make it look a little bit better. So cancel your render, go over to scene view, and let's try adding a background. Let's add a grid. We'll call this grid background. Dive inside. We can just change the orientation to maybe the XY plane. That should be fine. We'll also make it a lot bigger. We'll make it a 50 by 50. And now we can just move it around. And because it's just a grid and it's always just going to be a grid, we can just move it from our object level. We don't have to actually move the grid inside of our object. So switch to your transform handles and move this around a bit. You can just rotate it, move it back. Just position it so that it covers our background quite nicely. And one thing that we don't want to forget is that this might be blocking our light. So right click on this camera over here, select area light, and yeah, it's hitting the back of our grid. So switch on lock camera and just move it and zoom in until we're past our grid. Great. So let's just move it over here. Perfect. So now we have that in place. And let's give our grid a nice material as well. So material palette. Drag over a principal shader, double click, rename it to background grid shader. Back to your material palette, drag it, drop it over there. And let's make this maybe a dark purple, All right? That could be nice. Might look quite magical. And as for roughness, we'll decide once we render it. So let's go back to our render view, click on render, and let it run for a bit. So great, and you know, now we have this all in place and we can just adjust things. So for example, our area light, if it's too bright, you can go onto it and adjust its exposure. Maybe just something like that. And then maybe you want to add a light in the background so that it looks like it's lit from above. So we'll just position over here, sort of downwards and create a spotlight. Now, as you can see, the nice thing about the spotlight is it gives us that sort of cone that fades off as opposed to the area light, which is more of a flat, large scale light. Go to render view and, you know, just keep making adjustments until you find something that you like. This is the part where you have complete creative control and I can't give you exact settings. This is just up to you, whatever you think looks nice. And that is the basics of rendering. Now, in the next part, I'll show you how to actually render this out to a file and how to render out a video. And we can just render this out as our first little project. You know, it's a very basic donut and you know, we haven't really put much time into this, but these core foundational concepts really transcend throughout Houdini. No matter how complex the thing that you're working on is, these are just little tips and tricks that really you'll find in every project. You'll always have your material set up. You'll pretty much always have an environment light. You'll always have some sort of lighting. You'll have a camera. And so these are just things that you can reuse as you go. That's it for this part. I'll see you next time with part five. In part five, as I said, we'll be going over how to render this out to file and how to create a video out of this, as well as how to add things like motion blur and depth of field and all of those cool things that really just make it look nice. So see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like, consider subscribing, or if you'd like, leave a comment telling us what you liked about this tutorial and what you'd like to see and where you'd like this to go. And if you'd like to support us and get more content, please consider checking out our Patreon. There is a link in the description, all links in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.